All right, welcome everyone. Good evening, good evening, good evening to everyone. God bless you and welcome Relentless Global Church. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're excited about tonight, excited about the Word of God. We're, we're going to have an exciting time. Hey, Miss Raquel, good evening. God bless you all. Miss Mary Ann, God bless you. We are excited about the Word of God. God has something spectacular, spectacular for us on tonight, and we're excited about sharing the Word of God with you on tonight. Hey, Christina, my lovely daughter, love you, sweetheart. Bless my, my son and my grandbabies in Little Rock. We love you. We are definitely excited about the teaching of the kingdom, and, and we've been teaching on hindrances. Man, we're excited about that. Uh, we're going to still talk about the third one. Heading on Sunday to <laughs> hindrance number four. And we're excited about sharing that as well. Uh, Miss Consuela, good evening. Good evening. Hugs and kisses to you, my daughter. We love you too. So again, we are excited about the word of God. So text, hey, Miss Linda, text someone and call someone and send them a message. Let them know. Tamara, the good family, God bless you. Good to see y'all. And we're going to share the word of God again on, on this evening, man. And I'm telling you, our God is a good God. Our God is faithful. He, he, I, I, he has done wonderful and marvelous things for all of us. I, am, I can lift up my hands and truly say this is the Lord's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. Why? Because he remains faithful. Hey, Miss Tanya. Hello, hello. Tell your husband I say hello again. We bless your household. Miss Darlene, welcome. Good evening. And that's my lovely wife. And so, and yeah, continue to pray for my lovely wife. She's doing well. She's just recovering. Hopefully we'll see her. We'll be together. I miss, you know, uh, you know, she's my Robin to Batman. She's my, <laughs> I'm Superman and she's my sidekick there. I, I miss her very much. I love her very much. Continue to pray for her. She's doing great. So thank God for your prayers already. So we love you guys and appreciate your prayers. But again, as I was sharing, uh, the word of God is going forth. We're reaching and touching many people all over the world. And the gospel of the kingdom is bringing forth results. And again, as we shared before, we want to make sure you share your testimony with us. Call the office and let us know what the Lord is doing in your life, what good things. It doesn't matter how small it is. Some people think you got to have this great big miracle. I mean, the earth has to shake for you to testify the goodness of the Lord. No, man, if God has healed your body of, a, of whatever, if God has given you a promotion, if God has done whatever God has done, this is the kingdom of God results. God has given you favor. It's the kingdom of God results. God made your, your marriage the better. It's the kingdom of God results. And I'm here to tell you at the end of the day from my wife and I, and not only as pastors, but our personal life, we want to see the supernatural power of God manifesting itself in our lives. So we are thankful we are grateful to our God. We're not going to whine, cry, and complain. That's not what we do. We are kings. Kings don't cry. Kings do what? They declare and they decree what they desire, and it happens in their lives. That is the kingdom of God. And so we are grateful. So you spend your time every day lifting up your hands to God, lifting up your hands to heaven, giving God praise and honor for all the good things. Look, we can, we can name 20 negative things about life. But no, we're going to focus on the goodness of our God because at the end of the day, he remains faithful. So we're in agreement for those who are believing for employment, for those who are praying and believe for their marriages and, their, and they want healing for their family, for their children. And we set ourselves in agreement. Hey, hey Rona, my sister-in-law, God bless you too. And so we want to make sure we continue to pray for our president, our government, our congressmen, and our, our senators, and all those that are in authority because they're making decisions on our behalf as well. So we want to intercede on behalf of these, these people. Who, who's to say that God won't raise up someone like they did with Naaman? The little maid told Naaman's wife, there's a prophet uh, over there who can heal your husband. And because of that little maid, that one woman who might seem insignificant, she gave a word to, to the mistress of the house and she told her husband, there's a prophet in Gothen. And, and, the, and he went to Gothen 
found the prophet. The prophet healed him, told him what to do, caused him to be healed. His life was made the better because he received the word from, from a man of God. So we declare that the Lord blesses your life, blesses your home, blesses your family, and he bestows upon you the kingdom of God. Amen. So God bless you. So let's go straight into the word of God t tonight and get prepared because it's really going to rock you about. We're talking about number three, the number three hindrance to the kingdom of God working and flowing in your life is lazy. So, so let's just a word of prayer quickly. Father, we thank you for this time of study. We honor you and bless you. We declare no flesh will be glorified in your sight. The word of the living God is a seed sown into our hearts of your people. It shall produce the kingdom of God. It shall manifest the kingdom of God. And we are blessed to be a blessing in the lives of others. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The kingdom of God is a spiritual realm in which God reigns. Uh, and God reigns as king. It is a country ruled by a king, and, and the king here on earth in us is Jesus. Uh, it is a domain where values, morals, and lifestyles of the king is taught to the people of God. In Matthew 6 and 33, the Bible says, seek ye first, get in hot pursuit of what? The kingdom of God, and it will produce righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. The Bible says when you seek God and his kingdom with all your heart, the Bible says he will add or he will give you the things that you desire in your heart. And you must declare that. That's Matthew 6 and 33. Write it down. Put it on your, on your refrigerator, in your bathroom. Write it down. And you start declaring, I'm going after God's kingdom and I'm going after kingdom results. Luke chapter 4 verse 43 says, Jesus said, I must go about my father's business and preach the good news of the kingdom. What's the good news of the kingdom? I, I don't have to be poor. I don't have to be crazy in my mind. I don't have to be broke. I don't have to be sick. I don't have to live a miserable life. I don't have I, I don't have to have craziness in my life. I can have the shalom of God. What is what what is the kingdom? The kingdom is it causes me to rise and not for me to to rise for myself and for my family, but for me to rise with those that are connected to my life that I can be an example of God. I can be an example of the king. I can be an example to my nieces, my nephews, my brothers, my sisters and whoever else are connected to my life when they see God's glory on my life, God's anointing on my life, God's kingdom on my life, then they will come to the shining of my glory and I can tell them this is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Luke chapter 22 verse 29 says, I have bestowed like a mantle, I have bestowed upon you a kingdom just as my father Jehovah bestowed it upon me, Jesus, I have received the kingdom, I have received the power, I have received the anointing, and just like my father bestowed it upon me, Jesus says in Luke chapter 22, verse 29, so I bestow upon you the kingdom of God. So we have the kingdom. <laughs> we just have to know that this power is on the inside of us. Amen. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 4 says these words, Jesus said and asked, said, go tell John, the John the Baptist, watch this. He says, of the kingdom of God, he says, go tell John what you hear. So that means he was hearing testimonies of the goodness of God. The kingdom of God results was happening. And he says, go tell John all these things that's happening in the lives of the people of God. He says, the things that you hear, all these witnesses, all these testimonies, you hear the testimonies of God's goodness and faithfulness. He says, go tell John not only what you hear, but what you see. So what did they see? The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor, watch this, the poor have the gospel or the good news of Jesus Christ. And what is Jesus Christ coming to bring to us? A kingdom. So they're hearing the good news of the kingdom. He says, go tell John all these things that are manifesting. So now we've been talking about hindrances to the kingdom of God. Number one, we talked about unforgiveness is a hindrance. Why? Because Proverbs 4 and 23 says, out of the heart flows the issues of life or out of your heart. Hey, brother Doug, out of your heart flows the kingdom of God. Out of your heart flows the anointing of God. 
Out of your heart flows the power of the Holy Spirit. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, the words of the prophet, the words of the king that we declare. So all of these things are housed on the inside of you. The Bible says we are the temple of God. So you got to be careful what you place inside of your body, which is the temple. So we talked about unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is a danger to you and I because unforgiveness is like drinking cyanide poisoning, but but expecting someone else to die. Well, you got to know cyanide poison only kills you. So that's what unforgiveness is like. So you must forgive. Come on, shout with me. I must forgive. Then offense number two, um, excuse me, a uh, hindrance number two is offense. And we talked about John the Baptist again here. Well, John the Baptist in the same scripture in Matthew chapter 11, Jesus says to John the Baptist, and not only do the blind see, not only do the lame walk, not only do the poor have the gospel preached to them, but he also says, blessed is the man that's not offended at me. So John the Baptist's problem wasn't the anointing. John the Baptist's problem wasn't that he was sick. John the Baptist's problem wasn't that he was a blessed man, a wealthy man. It wasn't that he was struggling with his calling because he was a legitimate prophet. Jesus showed him what his problem was, and it was offense. And at the end of this, John ended up being beheaded because he could not let go of the offense, and the, the offense caused him an early death. Offense destroys you. So let it go. Come on. Say it back to me. I got to let it go, man. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Because it's not worth your life. It's not worth the life of your family and your children to hold on to unforgiveness in your heart. Why? Because the kingdom of God will not work in your life. So let it go. So now we've been talking about laziness. And we, 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 we're going to go over some, a few scriptures that we went over last week. And we're going to close with some new information. What is the danger of offense? It brings you, the scripture says, to poverty. It brings you to hunger. It brings you to forced labor. The, it brings you, another word uh, says, hey, Miss Jewel, welcome. We bless you, my dear. Uh, it, uh, unforgiveness or laziness, excuse me, laziness brings you to decay. So that's Proverbs 21 and 5, which says the plans of a diligent man leads you to plenty, plenty, but those are who are hasty surely to poverty. So laziness brings forth poverty. Proverbs 19 and 15 says laziness casts one into a deep sleep and also will cause you to suffer hunger. Hey, Brother Paul Demi, God bless you, man of God. Proverbs 12, 24 says uh, the hand of the diligent will rule meaning they will govern. Uh, it's a kingdom word. They will have control. They will have authority. But the lazy man will be put to forced labor. We talked about laziness is defined as uh, sluggard, uh, idleness. It's defined as slothful, slack, or undisciplined is another word. Laziness represents an empty spirit. It represents uh, uh, faithlessness. It represents idolatry. Why idolatry? Because you rather hold on to your unforgiveness. You rather hold on to your laziness. You rather hold on to the anger. You rather hold, hold on to something that someone's done to you in your past and you won't let it go. And you treat it like it's a God because what they did was wrong, but you don't understand that it causes you to stay solo, isolated, single in, 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 in a frame of mind that will not produce anything. And it's called laziness. Numbers chapter 13, verse 30, uh, Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and let's go possess the land. Because God sent 12 spies into the land, not to, to see if there were giants, not to see if they could not overtake it. He only sent them into, uh, uh, into the Canaan, into the promised land to see and to show them that what God said was true is flowing with milk and honey. The kingdom of God produces milk and honey. <laughs> it will cause you to walk in extreme wealth, extreme blessings, extreme success, extreme health. Oh my God, extreme joy, extreme happiness. This is what the kingdom of God can produce for you. Uh, and the Bible says in Proverbs 12, 24, the hand of the diligent will rule. But the quote is, the, the diligence curses laziness. So if you want to come out of laziness, get into diligence. We talked about seven deadly sins. The Bible talks about seven deadly sins that will cause trouble in your life. Lust, 
envy, gluttony, anger, greed, pride, oh, laziness, slothfulness. Now, isn't it amazing how we can, we, can, we can say, yeah, lust will destroy you. We can say, yeah, envy in your heart will destroy you. We can say, yeah, overeating will destroy your life. Anger, surely anger will destroy you. Being greedy, taking more for yourself, it can destroy you. Your pride, oh yes, my pride can destroy me. But no one considers laziness will destroy you. <laughs> it is a hindrance from the kingdom of God working in your life. Amen. Then we talked a little bit about the coronavirus. And why did we bring that up? Because a lot of us, and like myself, you know, not necessarily going to work or full time or whatever. A lot of us are working from home and so on. And, and we have all this time on our hand. Why not use it to our advantage to be a witness to others? I'm not necessarily talking about preaching on the corner, but there are people that are connected to our life that we can speak the word of God to, to be a witness. We can definitely pray, pray, stand in the gap, intercede on behalf of others. We can sow, we can give, and we can support the gospel. We can support others by giving to others. Um, we can be used by God to bless and to be a blessing to others. And definitely, we can read and study the word of God. Why can't we do that in this time? Many of us cannot do it because we're lazy. <laughs> and the Bible says the way, Proverbs 15, 19, the way of the lazy man is a hedge of thorns. Can you imagine a hedge of thorns all around your life? What does it mean? Sorrow. It represents hardship, pain, idleness, uh, a life of difficulty. But then the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4, listen to this. The Bible says the lazy man will not plow in the winter because he says it's cold, but he also will beg during the harvest having nothing. And aren't you tired of your life not working? Aren't you tired in your life not producing? Hey, Miss Connie, we love you, precious. Aren't you tired of, 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 of being lonely, sad, depressed? But the Bible says that you don't have to live your life that way when you can rise up, come out of your laziness, out of your slothfulness, get into the word of God, and the word of God will cause you to succeed and flow in your life. The word of God will be a blessing to your life. Amen. Text me back and say amen. This quote says this. Listen to this quote. Lazy people can't seem to connect the negative consequences they experience to the poor decisions that they make. They don't take care of their personal, their personal responsibilities. So the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter, 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 8, but if anyone does not provide for his own household and especially uh, does not pro provide for his own and especially of his own household, he has denied the faith and he is worse than an infidel. So lazy people are so lazy that they won't even provide for their own household. And you wonder why your children don't respect you. You wonder why people want to be away from you. You wonder why people don't want to have any connection to your life. But then the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 that God put man in a garden not to chill all day, not to relax all day because there's time for that. There's time for us to enjoy our families. There's time to go on vacation. There are time to relax and, and enjoy life. But then there's time to pray. Then there's time to fast. There's time to intercede on behalf of others. There's time to sow. There's a time to reap. So there's a time for all things, but don't be so lazy that we get up and do nothing to advance our lives. Then we talked about Proverbs. Man, I love this scripture. We also talked about Proverbs chapter 6, and we talked about the ant. And then the writer in, in Proverbs chapter 6 says, look at the ant as an example. And, 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 and you can read it on your own time, but I want to give you the characteristics of the ant. The, the ant is the smallest of all of God's creation, but watch that. It, but together, if they produce strength, strength. Together, they produce diligence. The ant represents willpower. The ant represents determination, sacrifice. One ant will die for the other to give the other the advantage because the purpose is for the whole. The ant represents loyalty. Amen. The ant represents 
uh, proactive or productivity. They are self-motivated. The Bible says that the ant in Proverbs 6 have no captain, no leader, no supervisor, no overseer, no ruler, but they still get up and put their hands to work. The ant represents purpose-driven. It represents order. They represent excellent because they work together. They represent planning. They, ants are planners. <laughs> and they plan for the future because they work in the summer, but they plan to be on the ground so they can feed in the winter. They're excellent planners. Are you seeing yourself? I hope you're seeing yourself. <laughs> the ant represents teamwork. They, they, they share, they cooperate one with another. And also the ant, uh, uh, they do not procrastinate. <laughs> Glory to God. And so now, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 11, that's where you read the story about the end. Joshua 1 and 8 says these words. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, your mouth, and but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do all the things that are written in it, for you will make your way prosperous. You will make your way prosperous. You, not your mother. You, not your daddy. You, not your pastor. You have to get up out of your laziness and you got to make your life work. You have to take responsibility for your life and be honest with yourself about where you are. Jesus said in John chapter 9 verse 4, I must work the works of him that sent me what? While it is day, the night coming, no man can work. Jesus knew he had a certain amount of time before he had to go to Calvary's cross. Hey, Andrea, we love you, my dear. Jesus knew he had a certain amount of time from the time that John the Baptist baptized him. He had two and a half to three years to preach the gospel of the kingdom before he had to be nailed to Calvary's cross. But Jesus said he had to work. What was his work? Preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Then, of course, he says in Luke chapter 9, verse 62, uh, Jesus said, no man having putting his hand to the plow. Plow represents work. If any of you old country people out there, you know that your grandfather, your great grandfather, that they had a farm and, and they had to plow. Plow represents work. And to plow, you move forward. To plow, you can't look at your past. To plow, you have to move forward. You can't think about the ex-wife, the ex-husband, someone who hurt you, someone who betrayed you. When you put your hands to the plow, you have to move forward. Come on, shout with me. Move forward. You can't stay where you are. So that means we can't afford the price of laziness. <laughs> Glory be to God. Jesus was not a lazy man. He was a carpenter. Paul was not a lazy man. He was a tent maker. Peter, James, and John were not lazy people. They were fishermen. Uh, Matthew was a tax collector. And the Bible declared, God never calls anyone doing nothing. Everyone in the Bible, you can search it up and look it out for yourself. Everyone that Jesus called, were, they were active, working, making their lives happen when Jesus put a call on their lives. In Jesus' name. And so we use the illustration of Genesis chapter 25. I'm not going to read it. Genesis 25 and 29, where we saw Jacob and Esau and how Esau was so lazy to cook his own food that he sold his future out. He sold his birthright. And he walked away in tears when he realized the cost of his mistake. So now we close with Matthew chapter 25. And, and there was a, a, a wicked man that, that the king or the ruler gave him money, but he was so lazy he wouldn't put the money in the bank so he could gain interest. And the king called him a wicked and lazy servant. And what happens to lazy people? The Bible says that the king took from him and gave it to the one that had. And that's what happened with lazy people. Lazy people sit around all day, life passes them by, and when it's time for them to have a harvest, they didn't sow anything, so they don't have any food to eat. Now they got to beg, they got to borrow, they got to plead with people, they got to compromise themselves and compromise their values because they did not prepare in the time of uh, uh, when it was time to sow so they could have a harvest. So I denounce laziness out of your life. So now let me ask you a few questions real quick. Am I a lazy Christian? So let's look at a few questions that will answer that and see if you can see yourself. Do you justify your existence or make excuses for your slothfulness? 
And that goes a lot of ways. We're not talking about just spiritual things. We're talking about natural things, like like your car. <laughs> I remember a man of God saying one time, "In some some of the saints' cars, you can you can sit in the car and and, and order a two piece of fries because you got food all in the car because saints are too lazy just to clean their cars." A saints are lazy to clean their own houses. A saints are lazy just to tell your husband or wife, I love you, I appreciate you, because you just don't feel like being bothered. See, this goes both ways, not just in the natural realm, but in the spiritual realm. Some folk houses, I won't dare drink a glass of water because of the surrounding that proves that they are lazy. Don't let that be you. Praise God. So do you justify your existence for your laziness? If you do, you are lazy. Number two, do you expect unnecessary, watch the key words now, unnecessary charity. Because we're not talking about, about people that legitimate have a, legitimately, hey, Miss DeAndre, we love you. We're not talking about people that legitimately has a need and they need help. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about people who sit around all day and they don't want to get up and make their lives happen, but then they are asking for charity because they are not making their life work. Remember, you, you, you have to put your hands to the plow and you have to make your, your life work. Number three, do you always depend on others for everything? <laughs> if you do, you're lazy. Number four, do you think you, well, key word, do you think you deserve help. Hey, Brother Joe, bless you and your family. We love you, man. Do you think you deserve help? Not that you may need help and people may need help at different times in life. We're not talking about that. We're talking about people who are so lazy that the, the kingdom of God cannot be seen in your life because you won't come up off of your hands to put your hands to work. Oh, my goodness. So, so lastly, are you easily offended when you're confronted about your laziness? <laughs> and if you're easily offended, then life won't work for you. Listen to this quote as well. A lazy person continues to choose an unsatisfying, unrewarding, poverty-induced lifestyle. Oh, let that sink in. We're talking about hindrances to the kingdom of God working. Because the Bible says out of your heart flows the issues of life. Your heart can't have a natural flow if it's being blocked by unforgiveness. If it's being blocked by anger and bitterness or jealousy or strife. Or if it's being blocked by laziness. One of the deadly sins of your life not working is laziness. Let's look at these comparisons. From lazy to diligent. From laziness to diligence. Watch this. A lazy person takes while a diligent person gives because they work, because they work, now they have to give. A lazy person is a parasite sucking the life out of others while a diligent person produces. A lazy person sleeps late while a diligent person rises early. A lazy person produces poverty. A diligent person produces wealth. A lazy person, person loses opportunity while a diligent person creates opportunity. Lazy people cause hunger. Diligent people feed the hungry because they have to give. <laughs> lazy people are full of excuses while diligent people take responsibility. Lazy people have no drive while diligent people are ambitious. Lazy people have a negative attitude Diligent people have positive attitudes. Do you see yourself? Lazy people are distracted while diligent people are focused on the, 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 the subject at hand. Lazy people are fearful. Diligent people are faithful. Lazy people find a reason to say we can't while diligent people find a reason why we can. Lazy people say I'll do it tomorrow but diligent people say, why put off today, tomorrow, tomorrow what you can do today? So now, as I come to a close, how do I overcome laziness? Well, the Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 21, therefore, lay aside. <laughs> you, you have to do this. 
I can't pray this out of you. I can't lay hands on you. I can't pour oil on you and cause this lazy spirit or demon to come out of you. It's not a demon. It's not a spirit. It's a decision. <laughs> come on. Somebody write me and say, it's a decision. Yeah, it is. It's a decision. <laughs> so James says, you have the ability to lay aside some things. So lay aside all filthiness. Uh, of wickedness and receive with meekness the engrafted or the implanted, watch this, word of God, which is able to save your soul. So the answer is to get the word. When you get the word of God about laziness, then you, what, what do you do? You repent and then what do you do? You renew your mind or your thinking. You got to take responsibility for your life. So Adam took responsibility. He took care of the garden. God told him to work it and to tend it. You can't work and tend if you're lazy. Moses took responsibility to stand before Pharaoh. And he had to take the responsibility not to be afraid, but to do what God called him to do. Noah took responsibility to build the ark, even though he saw no rain for a hundred and so years. Abraham took responsibility for his nephew Lot, his family member. And Lot was in Sodom and Gomorrah because he chose badly. And there are people in your life that, that just make bad decisions, but you have to be that Abraham in their lives to bring them out of the situation and take responsibility. David took responsibility for the 37 men, mighty men of valor. Because, because of David's anointing and David's purpose and David's call, David covered those men and he took responsibility for those men and they became prosperous and wealthy men because of David. And lastly, Jesus took responsibility for his disciples because he prayed for them. He loved them. He gave to them. He sacrificed for them and he died and was resurrected for his disciples. And then the, uh, number three, the Bible says, Awake to righteousness, my last scripture. Awake to righteousness. You got to wake up. You got to come out of your slothfulness. You got to stop being lazy. You got to stop being offended. You got to stop with your bad attitude. You got to get up and make your way prosperous. You have to do that. Not your church. You have to do that. Not your pastors. You have to do that. I don't care who your favorite evangelist is. You have to awake from your righteousness. 1 Corinthians 15 and 34 says, Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have, watch this, they have not the knowledge of God, but I speak this, Paul says, to your shame. Why? Because you ought to get up and pray. You ought to get up and fast. You ought to sow into the kingdom of God. You ought to forgive. You ought to provide for your family. You ought to read the word of God. You ought to meditate and study. These are things you ought to do, but you won't be able to do them and see the manifestation of God's kingdom working in your life if you are a lazy man. So listen to this quote. Awake from your slumber and put your hands to the plow and move forward. Come on, text me, move forward. And then because God, listen to this. This is a word from the Lord. God, our King, God, our Heavenly Father can redeem the time. He can turn your sadness into joy. He can turn your mourning into dance. He can turn your, answers, your, your ashes into a crown of beauty. And he can turn the spirit of heaviness into a garment of praise. In other words, if you make a decision to come out of laziness, if you make a, a decision to forgive, if you make a decision to come out of slothfulness, it's a decision. You don't have to call the prayer line. It's a decision. <laughs> Glory be to God. That's the word on tonight. I hope you enjoyed the word because we're talking about the number three hindrance. And we've been talking about number one was unforgiveness. Number two was offense. Number three was laziness. And on Sunday, man, don't miss Sunday. Because on Sunday, we're going to have another one that's talking about the hindrance to the kingdom of God. Because listen, people of God, Relentless Global Church and our Facebook church family, all of you that are out there that are hearing uh, the man of God declare the word of God over your lives. I and my wife and I, we want to see 
the kingdom of God manifest in your life. We want to see the supernatural power of God flowing in your life because our Lord and Savior, our King Jesus is the same yesterday. He's the same today and he's the same tomorrow. But I'm declaring that you're today. That in the name of Jesus, you will see the manifestation of God's goodness, God's greatness, and God's power flowing in your life. Because the Apostle Paul said these words. He says, the kingdom of God is not in word, but the kingdom of God, he says, not in word only. Because you know we declare the word. But he says, it comes in power. And I declare that power flows in your life. But you got to make sure you have a clean heart. Because out of, the abundance, uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So the mouth is not going to speak and declare goodness if it has uh, sin, sin and laziness and slothfulness and things blocking your heart. So we want to be able to have a pure and clean heart so the kingdom of God can work. Come on, shout amen. Glory be to God. So I hope you enjoyed the word on tonight. Please share it with someone because these messages, I like to call them a message of hope. We want to we want to be able to share with the world. We want to be able to share with 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 this country. We don't want we want to be able to share with your family and friends the word that the Lord has given us. So we the word of God we declare is a seed, precious seed the Bible calls it, sown into your heart. And when you have a heart or a good ground where the word is sown, you don't have unforgiveness. You don't have anger. You don't have bitterness in your heart because you're getting the word of God and the word of God purifies you and cleans you that your heart may be pure. Now God can work and flow in your life and you can see the results that you've been believing for. So write us at Relentless Global Church, P.O. Box 2202, Houston, Texas, 77252. And if you want to email us, email us at inforelentlessglobal.org, inforelentlessglobal.org. And also, if you want to call us, let us know about what, what the goodness of the Lord is happening in, in your life. Or if you just need prayer or you want someone to pray with you, give us a call at Relentless Global Church at 713-936-6848. And also, I just want to remind Relentless Global Church members, if you have not received a letter from us, uh, they went out a week ago, a couple of weeks ago. If you not have not received that letter from us, please call the church office because maybe you moved, maybe you changed an address or whatever the case may be. We want to make sure we continue to connect with you, with you to let you know the things that we're continually, continually working on here at Relentless uh, Global Church. And also we want to continue to give and to sow into the ministry. As we said before, we want you to take care of your family. Your family comes first. Your family is your first church. Your family is your priority, especially in this pandemic at this time, because we don't walk in fear. We have whatsoever we say. So we want you to take care of your home, but, for, for, but we also want to know that the kingdom of God is the priority of your life. We cannot not, we cannot not finance the gospel of the kingdom. So for those of you who are able to do so, please continue to sow, give the kingdom of God the advantage, and we want to continue to have the opportunity to continue to preach the gospel and this message of truth. And also for those of you out there, our Facebook church family, if this word has been a blessing to you, so you can go on our Facebook page. There's a, a, a square there where you can sow your tithes, offerings, and gifts of love. And if you want to be a blessing, please be a blessing. We don't beg and plead anybody for anything. If God can't touch your heart to give, surely we can't make you give. So we have to trust God that God touches the heart of every man. Remember, the kingdom of God won't work for you if you don't have a pure and clean heart. And if your heart is right towards God, then you will give to the things of God. So you have our P.O. Box address. You have our email address. And if you desire to give, you can freely give, the Bible says, and do so. And, and, and let's prepare ourselves to hear another anointed and fresh word on this coming Sunday. Man, these messages have been a blessing. So please share them. We have been getting phone calls and people have been reaching out to us, not just from the church either. People have been reaching out to my wife now saying how much this word of the kingdom has been a blessing, especially people were struggling with unforgiveness. It's amazing. And so now we're talking about laziness, but 
Wait till you hear about what's coming up next. It's going to blow your mind. So God bless you. We love you. Go spend time with your family. We bless your household. We bless your children. We bless your children's children. We bless your marriage. We bless your employment. May the Lord, for those who are believing God, we are the kingdom of God. For those who are believing God for full-time employment, we declare and, and, and decree that God raises up full-time employment with benefits. Because when they say there's a casting down, we say there's a lifting up. God loves you. We love you. And we will see you on next week. Pray for us. Continue to pray for us. Our strength. Again, my wife is doing so much. Thank you for your prayers for my wife. She's doing great. She's recovering and all is well with, 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 with Pastor Betty. She's doing wonderful. Hopefully she'll be with us on Sunday. So you'll see my beautiful covenant vow on my side again. So God bless you. We love you. And we declare the blessings of the Lord on your life. We will see you on Sunday. Be ready. Be prepared for another word from the Lord. Amen. We love you. God bless you.